Okay, ladies and gentlemen, it is the uh, day of the Critics' Choice Awards. I've uh, continued to have a lot of technical difficulties, so um, kind of had to step away there for a little while before I could uh, try to, you know, get some stuff corrected here where hopefully this video will go all the way through without any uh, weird editing or anything, but uh, so far I'm not liking this uh, scenario at all. Anyways, uh, let's go ahead though and we'll uh, get into predictions here really quick for Critics' Choice. And then we will uh, go ahead and do uh, just some quick reactions to the PGA and DGA nominations that came out, uh, just to, to kind of get those out of the way. And we might do some uh, more talk on uh, some other stuff here uh, through the rest of the week here. Anyways, uh, so I'm a little bit behind here just because of time stuffed here today. But uh, anyways, um, we have the uh, Critics' Choice actually already underway, and I'm uh, trying to get the, again I'm trying to get this as quick as I can here but uh I'm really struggling here with this technical shit so trying to figure this out so I can uh do this as best I can here without any more hiccups cuz it's uh, seriously I've been trying to shoot this video for 2 days and it has never worked out so anyways animated feature they've already announced that that's uh Spider-Man Across the Spider-Verse hand of god that was what I picked and uh we did, we did talk a little bit after the Golden Globes there uh since Miyazaki had not won before uh, that explained them giving them uh, Boy and the Heron uh, for the Globes. Um, otherwise, Dominic Sessa did win for Young Actor or Young Actress, but uh, I don't usually predict that one anyways because it's a whatever category. It doesn't carry over to, to anything else. All right, so for the rest of these predictions here before the uh, night gets too far underway, visual effects, I'm going to give the win here to Oppenheimer. I think Oppenheimer is going to win this. Uh, it could be the creator, it could be poor things in an upset, but uh, it sometimes they'll just go with the most one of the more uh, popular ones here, so I'm going to go Oppenheimer. Uh, let's see, let's go to um, makeup and hairstyling next here. Uh, Maestro is my pick here. I think it's I think Maestro is probably going to dominate in this category the rest of the way going forward. It'll win here and at BAFTA as well, and then ultimately the Oscars. Um, I don't really know, other than maybe poor things, what else can upset here. It just feels like Maestro's really far ahead. In the music categories, best song, yeah, it's got to be What Was I Made For. Billie Eilish will win another one here for Barbie. Uh, best score, Oppenheimer, Ludwig Göransson. I think that's a pretty pretty good bet. Um, yeah, I don't really see anything else winning there. Uh, seems like it's, it's all his. Unless they want to give it to Robbie Robertson uh, because of his passing away, but hasn't worked out so far this year. Uh, let's see, what have we got next? Uh, next up will be the design categories. Uh, for production design, I'm going to go with uh, Barbie here, and I was really on the edge between picking this and Poor Things, and it really is kind of a toss-up, but I think with Poor Things, it did fine here at Critics' Choice. It didn't really, other than maybe uh, one of those slots for Willem Dafoe and supporting actor, I really don't know what else it could have gotten. It, it really did pretty well. But Barbie is just a lot more popular here at Critics' Choice. Getting America Ferrera in, getting cinematography, getting editing, some of these other categories that we think are maybe not going to happen at the Oscars. But uh, yeah, so production design, I'm going to go with Barbie. Uh, same with costume design. Also, I'm going Barbie here. And again, it is a bit of a toss-up. Uh, could you know? It could also be poor things here. They could split it, but just I'm just sticking with Barbie here. Uh, next up would be the uh, film editing category. Uh, for that, I'm going to go with Oppenheimer. Again, it feels like it's pretty far ahead. I'm not sure what's going to upset it. Um, yeah, pretty easy pick there. Cinematography, also Oppenheimer. Again, feels like it's pretty far ahead. I don't see what else can uh, can beat it. Uh, let's see. Then we do have the uh, foreign language film category. I think it's got to be Anatomy of a Fall here. Uh, again, when it has been going up against Zone of Interest and some of these other films, it's just been you know, not a problem at all, so I'm, I'm going Anatomy of a Fall there. Uh, let's see. So we knocked out quite a few of those tech categories right away here. Um, uh, next up would be Acting Ensemble. Let's do that one. And this one, I uh, ultimately went with Barbie here, um, also because of the popularity of the film. I don't know, other than maybe screenplay, what else it can win in these kind of upper, you know, top categories here. Uh, and it does have, again, the most nominations, so I think it can go there. It also did get the SAG nomination over films like uh, The Holdovers and Air. Uh, the other three that it's up against would be Color Purple, Killers of the Flower Moon, and Oppenheimer. Those three all got in at SAG as well, but uh, I'm going to go Barbie there. For the screenplays, adapted screenplay, I went with Poor Things. Um, 
it is kind of, you know, even though Oppenheimer does have a good script and everything, Poor Things is actually my favorite screenplay in this category of the ones I've seen. Um, haven't gotten to American Fiction yet, um, and I didn't, haven't got, uh, All the Strangers also has not opened yet, were uh, in my area. And I didn't uh, see Are You There, God, It's Me, Margaret. But uh, Poor Things was still my favorite here. And I, it, it does feel like Poor Things I don't see getting completely shut out here. Um, this feels like a spot it can win. On the original screenplay side, it is, again, this is kind of a toss-up here. They could go with uh, David Hemmingson for The Holdovers, but I um, I ultimately went with Barbie here. Um, and I think, again, Barbie, when it gets over to the adapted side, which should be only at the Oscars, because here it's original. Uh, when it Eventually, when WGA announces their nominees, it'll be an original there, and it is going to be a, a, in contention in original at BAFTA. But... Um, Really, it could, you know, it could be like one of those things where it just keeps winning an original and then they have to give it to something else later on. Uh, kind of not exactly what happened with Moonlight, because Moonlight, you know, lost a couple of those screenplay prizes uh, early on in, in the year. Um, but uh, yeah, if it's not going to be holdovers, it'll be Barbie. So I, my pick ended up being Barbie, though. All right, six categories left. Supporting Actress, um, Divine Joy Randolph. Divine Joy Randolph might be in cruise control the rest of the year here. Um, SAG, I think, will be the ultimate determiner. But again, I feel like with that, if we were going to start seeing like a Danielle Brooks or possibly even an Emily Blunt or someone kind of start to come up and uh, take down uh, Divine, I don't know. I just don't have that sense yet. It seems like Divine really has the attention of everybody. So um, yeah, I got to go with her for now. Supporting actor, uh, it's Robert Downey Jr. for Oppenheimer. This, really, of the four acting races, this is the first one that feels really secure. Um, supporting actors think there's just a tiny bit of mystery left, but once, if SAG goes to Divine, that one's over. I think there is going to be some suspense in Best Actor and Best Actress, up again, up until SAG. Um, that'll be the real determiner there. But, uh, no, I think Robert Downey Jr. is the first one we can kind of check mark for the rest of the season. Go ahead and give him the win. Best Actress. This this really is kind of close for me. Lily Gladstone had a great moment with her speech at the Globes. Killers of the Flower Moon, uh, it again, did very well here at uh, Critics' Choice. And it could be a spot where they, where they do give it something. <sighs> but I can't pick her. I'm going Emma Stone for Poor Things. And this, again, very close here. Emma's performance is next level, and Lily's is still really, really good. And I, you know... And I really do uh, think she's got a good shot ultimately at, you know, again, coming back and winning the Oscar, even if she doesn't win here. Again, SAG is going to be a big determiner. And uh, BAFTA, we could see, you know, BAFTA might throw a little wrench in there if Emma does win there and maybe Lily Gladstone loses or, you know, what happens there. And also one thing uh, some I've heard a little chatter about also, um, but ultimately I'm not buying is Lily, remember in uh, Killers of the Flower Moon at the beginning of the season, she was uh, campaigning in Supporting Actress. And when you watch the movie, Killers of the Flower Moon, you could argue that uh, both DiCaprio and De Niro have more screen time than her, more dialogue than her, arguably a bigger part than she does, and yet she's in Lead Actress. So that kind of, some have called it category fraud. Uh, personally, I'm, it's really a close call for me. It's one of those, it's like, okay, I can see where you can call it a supporting role, but I can also see where you can call it a leading role. There's, I think, just enough there where it's like, okay, you know, I, you know, where you can lump it in and say, yep, it is a leading role, um, and everything there. It's, it's just close enough where it's like, I'm okay with it going lead, but, um, but yeah, there is a little bit of a little speculation rumor mill kind of floating around that's saying, hey, we could see her win in Best Actress in a lot of these categories, but then when the Oscar nominations come out here in just a little under, uh, uh. A, two weeks, what if she ends up in supporting? What if it's a, uh, you know, like a, uh, uh, oh geez, Kate Winslet, Kate Winslet situation like we saw with the reader where she was getting in pretty regularly in supporting actress for that role. Sometimes she would get nominated and actually at the Golden Globes that year, she won in both lead actor and uh, supporting actress uh, for her roles in Revolutionary Road where she was contending in lead and then supporting where she was in uh, for the reader. And I've, I've, I've heard a couple speculations like, oh, she's going to, you know, keep winning Best Actress, then they're going to stick her in Supporting Actress. But I don't know. I think with the wind, the way the wind is going with this film and, and uh, the recognition that she's getting and everything, I don't see how the acting branch votes her in Supporting. It, I, I just don't think it's going to happen. So, um, yeah, obviously, if she does end up in Supporting, then we've got a big 
then we've got some troubles because then it's like between her and Divine. Oh boy, we don't know. <laughs> and then that, that might leave Emma Stone to just clean up there and Best Actress, but we'll we'll see. But for tonight, I am going Emma Stone. If she does lose this, then I think Lily can really capitalize on that. Uh, and uh, and then I'll probably start predicting her going forward. But uh, then again, again, I don't mean to say it like it's, you know, this is the last chance for Emma Stone to win the Oscar, but if she doesn't win here and Lily does win at SAG, then yeah, then you got to wave the white flag. You got to say it's it's Lily Gladstone. And Best Actor, I did, I had Bradley Cooper for a long time here. I'm Tonight I'm switching to Killian Murphy, and I didn't, I made this switch like a couple days ago, by the way, not like just today, I decided, no. Uh, I did decide to switch to Oppenheimer, again, just because that is the wave of this race right now. But again, when we get to SAG, we'll see if we see one of these flips happen, like we saw with Eddie Redmayne winning over Michael Keaton for, you know, Theory of Everything over Keaton and Birdman that year. Um, we And we saw a similar thing, you know, kind of sort of in development here a couple years ago, or uh, last year, actually, excuse me, in Best Actress, with um, uh, Kate Blanchett winning a bunch of stuff, and then Michelle Yeoh took over at SAG, and then we're like, oh, wait a minute, that probably is Michelle Yeoh now, because, again, the momentum of the film. It'd be kind of weird, though, to see it happen in reverse here, because Maestro is a film that has tended to trend a little downwards here in the last few weeks, um, versus Oppenheimer has, you know, continued to be pretty stagnant at that, you know, um, leading, you know, contender uh, range there. But, uh, yeah, for tonight, I gotta go Killian Murphy, and again, SAG, I think, will help determine that. And at BAFTA, I, th I feel like Killian probably does have a little bit of an edge there already over uh, Bradley Cooper, but uh, we'll see. Uh, in the directing category, I think you got to go Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer. Uh, really not too much else to add to that. I, I feel like he, he could be in steamroll mode uh, going forward here, just like Robert Downey Jr. And then for uh, Best Picture, also Oppenheimer here. Um, I don't know if uh, Poor Things or Barbie or even Kills of the Flower Moon has enough momentum to win here tonight at Critics' Choice over any of these other films. But uh, for now, I think it's Oppenheimer's to lose, and we'll just see if that momentum can carry forward to wins at SAG. Um, wins at a lot of the Guild Awards, and possibly, uh, you know, just really from there, just not really losing too many other things. All right, so I think we got through that pretty quick. Again, I'm worried uh, I got my camera situation still going on here, but uh, yeah, I don't think we're missing anything else here. Okay, so really quick, let's get into uh, the PGA nominees, uh, talk about them a little bit. Um, so your 10 nominees here, and I don't have these in alphabetical order, so I'm going to try to do it off the top of my head here. Uh, you got American Fiction, Anatomy of a Fall, Barbie. Uh, then you have, uh, which is next alphabetically here? I think uh, Killers of the Flower Moon, Maestro, Oppenheimer, Poor, uh, Past Lives, Poor Things, and the last uh, two would be The Holdovers and The Zone of Interest. Uh, so those 10 are in. And I was a little surprised, frankly, to see both Anatomy of a Fall and Zone of Interest make the cut. Uh, re more recently with PGA, when you do have a, you know, film like uh, Drive My Car, for example, that missed at PGA and DGA. Um, really, Parasite has been one of the only recent examples of a um, non-UK, non-American uh, film nominated at PGA. And uh, it only helps them in the Best Picture race. And really, at this point, I'm ready to, t to switch uh, Zone of Interest, put it in for Best Picture, and take something like The Color Purple, which has just, it's just been a struggle bust this year for that film. Go ahead and take that one out. So I've already done that with my Best Picture predictions, at least. But uh, this kind of confirmed it. It's like, yep, Anatomy of a Fall. If you didn't have it in already for Picture, it's in. Very much feels like it's in. I mean, I really don't know too many other films other than maybe like I, Tanya in recent years that has just gotten this much momentum up to this point and then failed to, to be nominated for Best Picture. Um, and then with Zone of Interest, yeah, even though, you know, it's it's really a toss-up if Jonathan Glazer or um, uh, Justine Trey is going to get that director nomination, or if they maybe both get it, and we see Greta miss, and we see Alexander Payne, and Bradley Cooper, and Celine Song miss in director, if you've got any, any combination of those. Um, it's possible, but I, I, I just don't know if the popularity of those films is strong enough to come over in that, you know, even though it is a really kooky, uh, branch there in the director's branch, very insular, very, you know, uh, stiff upper lip, you know, kind of, uh, kind of a, uh, award show anymore, or a, a branch anymore, rather. Um, yeah, it could be a tough call. Could be a tough call on, on who gets that. We've got a little bit of time to think about it here, but, uh, yeah. 
Um, yeah, but yeah, uh, Color Purple missing here just really, really hurt that film. It's already missed for the Golden Globe. Um, did get in at SAG, but it's, yeah, it feels like, okay, you're going to get Daniel Brooks. You're going to get maybe a couple tech categories. That might be it. It might be one of those uh, three nominees, maybe four, and that, and they're lucky to get that. Um, so, yeah, uh, that's... Uh, who else? Uh, May, December, Air, a couple of those other films. Yeah, they also were, I think, already kind of on the outside. Like, they weren't, like, at that 11 or 12 spot or anything, but uh, doesn't help them at all. Okay, so for DGA, our five nominees for Best Director are, and we're going to go alphabetically by director here, Greta Gerwig for Barbie, Yorgos Lanthimos for Poor Things, Christopher Nolan for Oppenheimer, Alexander Payne for The Holdovers, and Martin Scorsese for Killers of the Flower Moon. So right now in my director lineup, I've got four of these five. I don't have Greta in. I have Justine Trier in over Greta. I've got the other four, though. And, um, yeah, this feels pretty solid for, uh, at least for the contenders, though. Bradley Cooper, I, I feel like, gets hurt the most by this. Because at least with Core Jefferson for American Fiction and Celine Song for Past Lives, they're nominated in that first-time director's category, uh, which obviously Bradley Cooper was not going to be eligible for uh, this time. Uh, the other three, by the way, there are A.V. Rockwell for 1001, Manuela Mart uh, Martelli for uh, Chile 76, and Nora Nisari for uh, Shada. Um, anyways, but uh, yeah, as far as who's going to win this stuff, PGA and DGA, I would both go, uh, both be leaning Oppenheimer at this point. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't sense any crazy shifts here yet um, in, in the winner's races here. Anywho, but... Um, yeah, yeah. So if you were thinking Bradley Cooper for director for Maestro, it's it's getting it's getting tiff, it's getting tougher here. Um, it's getting tougher. Uh, let's see. I need to remind myself he was on the list for BAFTA, right? Gosh, I can't even remember now. Um, long list. Here we go. I thought he was. Otherwise, I think we would have spent a little bit more time talking about it, wouldn't we have? Yeah, he's on. He's on the list there for Maestro. That's right. Um, so really that's going to be his last chance to get a, to get a little stake in the ground there for directing. Otherwise, I think even with him out, Maestro, I still think it's going to get to that like seven, eight nomination range there, which is still a pretty good haul for the film and everything and, um, and all that, you know, and I don't think really too many people are calling it to win best picture really at this point. You're either in the, you know, there's a couple in the Barbie camp. There's a few in the Kills of the Flower Moon camp. Most everyone else is in the poor things or the Oppenheimer camp, and that's really about it. Um, yeah, so I think that's really about all we have to say about that one. Um, and then really quick, El Conde did get a spot at the Cinematographer's Guild. That was very interesting because then all, you know, if you want to count those opening few minutes of Killers of the Flower Moon that are, you know, making like an old crank, you know, old-timey film, all five of the films have a mix of black and white and color cinematography. Or, you know, um, uh, at least I think so. I haven't seen El Conde or anything, but I thought I'd heard that it's a mixed mix film. It's not only black and white, but I could be wrong about that. It could be only black and white, but uh, yeah. Either way, yeah, it's it's the way some of these, uh, the cinematographer's branch has been kind of uh, going the last few years. Like last year, we all kind of overlooked uh, the Alejandro Naritu film, which the title was another really long title, and I completely forgot what it was now. But um that one kind of surprised us a little bit. If I if I remember correctly, it was nominated at the Cinematographers Guild. And then we're like, oh okay, and then it did end up getting an Oscar nomination too. But I remember I I just I had discounted it. I wasn't thinking it was going to happen, but it did. So um, so yeah, I don't know if that necessarily means we need to put El Conde in, but I definitely need to consider it a lot more than I did the uh, the film last year from Inuri Two. Okay, so yep, time continues to run down here. I'm going to try to get this uploaded before. Too many other awards get handed out. I think they're going to start here, actually, in... Uh, i got to look at my phone here. 40 minutes, so... <laughs> Sorry for getting this uploaded, but again, I've continued to have a lot, of, have a lot, a lot, a lot of technical issues here. And um, I hate to say it, but I'm, I'm really struggling here to find any other alternatives. So if this continues and I'm just really not able to continue to upload we're, uh, you know, in this fashion, then we might have to stop for a while until I can find it. Um, so hopefully we don't miss too much in that time. But anyways, uh, I'll go ahead and log off now and we will uh, be back with you here later tonight after the Critics' Choice uh, hand out their prizes.